Welcome to the latest Stage Analysis video. It's Sunday the 4th of December 2022. Um, just a bit to start tonight. This is my first video at the a new standing desk, so just want to check that the, the audio is all right. So let me know if there's, if there's any problems with that as it's a different position. I've changed up the, the layout a bit, so just want to make sure the sound is the same as my microphone's not in a, is in a different position now so if you have any problems then obviously let me know a um, little bit for the members um, we obviously had with the, the Black Friday sale the other week there was a, a some new a lot of new members coming in with the on the annual offer so appreciate all of you guys for, for that joined up obviously um, what I do on these weekend videos is I tend to go through some of the, the longer term medium and longer term stuff so we start off with the looking at the, the major indexes, have a look at the industry groups, um, relative strength rankings, the what's going on with the IBD sector, um, industry group bell curve, like what, what stage the market is in from that. Also get down into the details of the, the market breadth and focus a little bit more on the, the broader market breadth that gives us a sort of um, focuses on the market timing and sort of strategy part from the market breadth. So it also gives us what stage we're in of the market, like much, much better than you can get from the from the market indexes as the market breadth gives us leading indicators. So we use a weight of evidence approach for that and then get into some of the week's stage two breakouts and finish off with the um, the watch list stocks from the weekend watch list scans and from Thursday's post as well. So one thing I was going to say for the members is that basically the videos can be, the weekend videos are quite long. They're about an hour to hour and a half long. So, but they are broken up into multiple sections. So at the bottom of the, the video here, you'll see there's, there's chapters. There'll be little dots at the bottom of the video in the, in the time bar. So and there's also a chapters actual button. And if you click on that, it will, you can basically jump to whatever section you're interested in. In terms of, uh, most of the, as I said, the majority of the video is more focused on sort of some of the medium to longer term picture at the weekend. So you don't have to watch that on a Sunday per se. It could be watched later in the week on a Monday, Tuesday, whatever. It's 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 not quite as time sensitive as the as the watch list stocks. So whereas obviously the watch list stocks are more more focused on what's going on in the in the coming days or so, but they can be obviously they can be quite early because we're looking at stocks in basis generally so there may be quite a bit of time before they they attempt to, to move out because obviously i want to highlight them well before they break out and oftentimes many many times before they actually break out of their bases so again it can be watched it doesn't necessarily all have to be watched on the sunday especially if it's posted later for anyone that's a member in in europe for example it's obviously posted quite late on a sunday compared to the american members so Obviously, hopefully that help you. I generally, so you could obviously watch part of it on Monday, part of it on Tuesday if, if you need to. So, right, let's get started. Tonight, um, first off, we're going to look at the, the in indexes, so S&P 500. Once again this week, we had another follow-through day. So three follow-through days now since that October spring low down here on October the 13th secondary follow through day back on the 10th of November and then another one on the 30th of November so lots of people were were fairly negative about this at the time last week but obviously you can see from Thursday and Friday's action the the pullback into the 200 day moving average was fairly constructive didn't didn't really make much of a move below it and actually managed to close on Friday back above it so and didn't in um, intrude much into the previous range and into the the follow through day bar here so we're so still above the the upper half of that follow through day bar so constructive so far however if it does start to fall back below that 200 day moving average then obviously it could get ugly quite quickly We've obviously had a big move in in a lot of stocks since that spring um low down here in october so obviously there's a lot of stocks that have moved quite significantly during the last month or so and could come off pretty quickly if it does start to roll over there. But short term trend remains up. We're still above the, the 180R level here. So as I've said before, the middle line here is the 21 day moving average on this chart. This level here, the second these on these bands is the 180R level. So generally when you're in a short term uptrend, you are above that 180R level. So you can see when you're in a downtrend, 
obviously well below that you don't get above it and then once you start to move above and start to move through it and start to hold above it then you're in a short-term uptrend so you can see for the last month now the vast majority of the price action has been above that 180 r level so and now we're back above the 200 day moving average and with the individual stocks in the s p 500 there's actually much more above the 200 day moving average than the the indexes itself there's it's well over um 60 percent at the moment and above their 20 day moving average we've got 87.6 percent so holding in that upper range at the moment until this starts to drop back below that 70 percent level again this remains on a, a short-term bullish signal so until we see the turn obviously the short-term trend remains up within a broader stage one structure mm -hmm. we look at this on a, a lower time frame this is the 195 minute chart which is two bars a day with the force index underneath so one thing i like to do with the force index is either put it at the bottom of the chart like that but you get a more dramatic picture of you if you overlay it so it gives you a, an idea of the the effort versus the result so you can see in this at the moment the moves down here there was a strong force to the downside here started to wane as the bottom we got that divergent move in the force index compared to what was going on in the price action at the time then we got that spring low down here and started to turn back up again and the force index has got back above the zero line here and started to hold mostly up and is trending higher with the price action so at the moment they're both in line with each other so that remains promising so far you look at going to more longer term charts so this is the weekly sata chart so this is the stage analysis technical attributes chart as i call it i've been posting these each week on twitter now for the major indexes as this has got the, the stage analysis technical attributes indicator overlaid in three different ways so we've got the band way up here where it basically when it's above seven it's green when it's below three or below it's it's red and when it's blue in uh in four four to six range so basically when we're in when we're above seven you tend to be in a, a stage two environment so for example we broke out as you can see back down here you got your first attempt to move out into stage two here it started it had already been on green for a couple of weeks there it started to move out so the majority of the time it was in stage two it was either in green we had the you get the occasional drop back into blue where it moves into the into the middle zone you can see in the oscillator here in the middle we get a few dips below but the majority of the stage two advance it was above the seven level whereas the opposite happens when you're in a stage four decline you're below that three level you tend to get the majority of the price action happen below the three level but then you get the occasional move back up again when you start to get a change of behavior you start to get some stage one behavior potentially starting to happen so once this starts to develop back into the middle and holds so at the moment you can see the es here is on a seven so if this starts to develop further then we could potentially start to move towards stage two type behavior so you tend to get stage two breakout tends to happen when it's on a nine or a ten so that's the ES at the moment. We look at the, the YM, the Dow. So I talked about this last week moving out, attempting to move into stage two. It did pull back this week, but then push back out again. So holding in stage two at the moment for another week, but right at the top of the range. So this could still turn into an up thrust and come back into the range again and continue to develop the stage one structure. But obviously, if it can continue to push push out, then obviously that would move many, many stocks continuing into stage two there. In Q, so this is NASDAQ 100. You can see we changed color this week to a SATA score of five. So moved from previous week, we were on a three. So jumped from a three to a five this week. So a little bit of a change of behavior going on again. So we had the change of behavior few here. It started to turn to stage one. Obviously, we had the failed stage four breakdown attempt that turned into a spring here of a higher low test, and then it's followed through. We're now testing that 30 week still declining moving average at the moment. So if this can continue to build out into it's in stage one at the moment. Russell 2000, on the other hand, is much stronger. You can see we've got an SATA score of an eight at the moment. We're testing the old resistance, support resistance levels at the moment. So you can see this was this was obviously support and resistance multiple times did manage to punch through during that july august period there where we got that start of potential stage one behavior so now let's start testing here so we potentially start to carry out through here we could start to move off and up into a, a potential stage two breakout through there you can see obviously the downtrend line has, has been broken for a little while now on that right 
then let's move on to QQJ I wanted to highlight as well. So I haven't shown this one for a little while. So this is the NASDAQ second 100 stocks. So you can get it by the symbol QQQJ. Very similar price action to what we've seen in the, in the NASDAQ 100. But as you can see, we're just starting to pop above the 200-day moving average, which is obviously different to what we've seen in the, in the NASDAQ itself. 100 itself you can see it's still below here so the, the large caps are lagging as such this is more of the mid cap stocks the secondary stocks in the in the nasdaq so we start to see this moving back above its 200 day moving average you can see it's been outperforming since around late october time then when we actually started to move into a more bullish scenario for the market with the market breadth so market breadth indicators turned up I think it was around october the 25th we moved to uh, a bull alert status and that and then move to bull confirmed a little bit later so this has been following that fairly solidly you can see obviously off of the October the 13th low there it's already moved up over 20 percent so good action in the in the secondary stocks in the Nasdaq there if we look at the Nasdaq composite itself obviously still below the 200 day moving average you can see testing see a near-term level in here we've got this lower range but the broader range is still under multiple levels of resistance down here still underneath the 200 day moving average so look still got what four four five percent to the 200 day moving average so potentially as i said with the, the nasdaq 100 we could be just testing uh, moving back into stage one type behavior here the broader range suggests stage one and what's going on in the individual stocks but could could still quite easily roll over and make a stage four continuation so we need to see this continue up and start to regain that 200 day moving average ideally russell 2000 much stronger as i showed on the weekly chart testing a near-term level here if we do get a break through that 190 level we've got a pivot above the 200 day moving average here so a break through the 190 level could potentially move the russell 2000 back to stage two so even though it would still be under a big level of overhead resistance here and then obviously the prior stage three high as well. So overhead resistance in a lot of those Russell 2000 stocks, but potentially could from a relative point of view compared to its 200 day moving average and often the first pivot, you get the pivot above the 200 day moving average is used as your breakout level. So we could start to move into stage two if we do get a strong move up through that area and you want to see some strong volume come in at that point. Obviously being an index, not necessarily going to get it, but obviously the better the volume, it's it always helps. ARC, I haven't shown this one for a while. Obviously been on a deep, dark stage four decline for a long while. Obviously highlighted the, the stage four breakdown at the time as it was, it was happening, but it's had a more than a year now in stage four been developing potential base structure here so we've got potential with a move back above the 10 week moving average here we could be in stage four b minus here could start to move potentially if it can get back above that 30 week moving average we could start to develop into stage one here and then quickly move out to stage two but after such a deep obviously stage four decline for a long time that tend to need much, much bigger base structures to develop. So this obviously has got a big base since May. So obviously up to six months plus now. So, but with such a deep stage four decline, you can you can tend to need even more than that. You need eight, eight months to a year or even more sometimes. So don't expect this one to be jumping back to stage two anytime soon. But if it does start to break some near-term levels in here, then would certainly be of interest. So we'll see we've got back above that that 30 week moving average at 41.62 okay moving on to the commodities and um forex etc so dollar index obviously key at the moment in terms of what's going on in the likes of the precious metals and the and the stocks as well We've got an inverse relationship to what what happens with the with the stock market a lot of the time as well as especially the precious metals so gold and silver tend to move counter what what the dollar index is doing so you can see we've had this big stage two advance so it started to move out into stage two somewhere around this kind of area here about a year ago now so i had a strong stage two advance i highlighted the buying climax week there obviously automatic reaction secondary test started to build a little structure in here then we had that change of behavior started to break down formed a, a spring low down a little swing low down here and attempted to bounce 
but the bounce was very weak, failed to get back above its 30-week moving average and roll back over. So it's actually made an early stage four breakdown attempt. You can see the breakdown attempt here. Obviously, some of the... It's not quite uh, the lowest scores yet, so a two. It's a pretty low SATA score here. Could still potentially bounce from here. If we look at us on a, on a daily chart, for example, you can see, obviously, the, the structure breakdown from up here. That fine climax or main reaction secondary test as i said we had a further secondary test and then failed to start to roll over lower lower highs and just started to break down dramatically at this point see it's attempting to to consolidate here could start to turn back up again a little bit but at the moment put the, the 50 day moving average on that is actually but and the 200 days now below its 200 day moving average for a few days unless it can recapture that then obviously we could see a, a quick stage four decline in this one and the flush and obviously that would be very bullish for the stocks obviously if we get the bounce on the other hand if this starts to recover back up again we start to get a move back up towards that declining 50 day moving average then obviously that would be a, a, a negative for the stocks so looking at keeping a good eye on this one and how it progresses at the moment because obviously it's been a dramatic pull off parabolic type move and, and off so sometimes these parabolic type of runs can come off very quickly so with the trade changing but if it as i said if it does start to rebound again then that would obviously start to put pressure back on the stocks again so we need to see this continue to either consolidate or or drift lower if you want obviously to to be more bullish for the for the stocks T-bond futures start to get a little bit of a change of behavior here. Start to score a five now. Sorry, my fan on the on the computer is going a little bit mad today. I'm not sure why. But so a little bit of a change of behavior. Still below declining 30-week moving average here. So still we put this as a, a stage four B minus at the moment. You can see the, the SATA score is improving, but obviously a lot of work for this one to do. Crude oil, let's take this back a bit so you can actually see it. Starting to break, so attempted to rebound this week. Obviously not the strongest of rebounds. It's in stage four at the moment, so it started to break down into, into stage four. This kind of area had the initial push down, secondary entry zone, and just rolled over. So looking for this to obviously make a continuation breakdown low, which would continue to put pressure on those oil and coal stocks. Coal stocks have been doing better at the moment though compared to the all stocks but obviously a lot of those are in in dangerous positions where they could turn into up thrust after distribution so just a just a warning of those as although they a few of them look like potential stage two continuation attempts they could obviously turn into into utads so copper futures big week this week so moving up in stage one at the moment you can see the structure that's developing. We've got the near-term pivot level through here. So we can start to get back above that $4 level through here. Old resistance, a little bit higher. So if it starts to move through the $4 level convincingly, then potentially we could start to see a move back towards stage two. But the 10-week moving average is still below the 30-week moving average at the moment. So it would be quite early still if it did. So we'd expect, obviously, more sideways action before a, a breakout potentially. But not necessarily going to happen, but at the moment, that's that would be the, the preferred for that. Gold, on the other hand, breaking the near-term pivot above the 30-week moving average there. We've got some some other old levels that it's, it's running into here. You can see on a, a short-term basis, breaking out on a, a quarterly basis there. It's turned green on the SATA score of an 8. But we've still got the 10-week the moving average here below the 30-week moving average. And the 30-week moving average there still declining currently. So it can't be stage two yet as we've still got a declining 30-week moving average. Look at this on a one-day basis. Let's take it down to the daily charts. It just moved above that 200-day that moving average through here, near-term resistance still. So at the moment, still in stage one, but obviously potentially getting closer to a, a potential stage two breakout level. And we have seen some stage two breakouts within the, the individual gold miners and the, and the silver miners. If I 
go to silver looking on the daily you can see on the other hand silver has actually broken out into stage two here we've got the pivot above the 200 week move and 200 day moving average here had a few days above there on friday so if we change this back to the, the weekly chart you can see the start of score of a nine so you've still got some overhead resistance which is that final line being on a neutral there so still obviously running into massive overhead resistance through this zone here so but in the near term continuing up coming out of the lower base structure and breaking the near term pivots through here so and the SATA score increasing to a nine so that silver actually making a stage two breakout whereas gold remains in stage one currently but that doesn't mean obviously it couldn't improve and then the european stocks 50 this isn't the commodity so just showing you this it's continued to drift up in stage two now for for four weeks potentially could could need to pull back a little bit but continuing to to move high you can see the, the technical attributes has continued to improve got a 10 week moving average back above the 30 week moving average now and it's above some near-term resistance levels as well as some older levels but moving into obviously the major resistance zone from the the original head and shoulders top there Right, moving on. The VIX. The VIX continuing to come off now, well below the 200 day moving average now that we use as the, the line in the sand for that. So, more in a much more positive environment now. So, when it's below the 200 day moving average, it's more favorable from stocks. And obviously, the further it gets away from it, the better. So, at the moment, it's in a, a more favorable position for, for stocks to continue to move higher. Obviously, that starts to turn. And that would be a, a negative sign. But for the moment, the trend remains down on the VIX.